What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 26 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Malachi McKyson Mortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, some fantastic fights and once again a bloody glorious battle for our Hammerer army. They managed to take down even more of the elite armies at once, but they were the last of the undead that they will be facing off against, at least here. Uh, they will soon be traveling to other places to have more fights. We still have Clan Moors, and we're certainly not ending the campaign with Clan Moors and the Bloody Hands as powerful as they currently are. There's still a lot of things down here uh, that uh, we could contend with. Should be pretty fun when we get to it. But for now, we have to knock the rest of these guys out and continue doing what we're doing. And we still have to complete the adventures as well. Anyway, now that's all a distraction. Uh, let's see what we got to do still in this turn. Can you guys move? Yes, you can. Okay, so we got to knock out the remnants of these little armies. Uh, I guess we can auto-resolve this real quick. And it's about time we start... Ooh, well, so before I forget, uh, it is time to start naming the hammerers. You know what? Let's just name like a couple right now. I uh, got a lot of name suggestions for these guys. So Frost silver frost tilver frost silver wardens for you and you can be the worm tamers there we go i'll hold off on the rest just for now because we are going to transfer more of the uh, uh, grudge settler type units into this army. I'm not sure how many of these guys will be able to replace with grudge settlers and because well We have limited space and the limited ability to actually acquire them uh, But uh, we'll do as many as we can uh, just so as many have frostbite and frenzy as possible Anyway, uh, we are going to auto resolve things. Yeah, so let's get rid of the rest of these guys No more need for this and I assume nobody will die doing this no, I suppose the frost rooms might get hurt. Maybe a little bit. Uh, we can... Well, honestly, it's not really worth healing up. Yeah, fine, let's execute. Oh, it's basically no money either. That's yeah, better than no money, though. We need a lot of money for the rest of our territories right now. Ow! This army remained a lot... Oh, well, that's kind of annoying. Because if we send you up there... Ah, okay, wait, 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 wait. What if we... Mission successful from this and land. Swell. Uh, what if we send you up here? Can you do this? You should be able to, right? Yes. Alright, you do this, and then that way uh, the other army won't have to move. And you don't need this obsidian trinket because it's garbage compared to the type of items that we can make, and we can hopefully get something better out of it. Uh, King Lun, at least for now, named. Move down here and destroy this army. And take the money once again. Is going to run away? Oh, please tell me that it's fully dead. <laughs> okay, yes it is. We can catch up to it. Good, 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 good. Go here, and auto-resolve it. Alright, and once again we'll take the cash and we will move into the Blasted Expanse where hopefully we will heal up nicely. A and a Lich Bone Pennant. That feels so appropriate for knocking out the uh, undead armies, doesn't it? Very nice. And Lani and Sisterhood destroyed. I don't think they'll be coming back from that one. Silver Pinnacle is also complete, so this place will be generating quite a lot of cash, actually. Damn. It's actually our second most money generating territory after Krakadrak, and I think the only reason Krakadrak right now is generating more is because I added an engineer to try to test out whether uh, whether this stuff would make it worthwhile. It kind of is, maybe a little bit. They end up uh, making about 200 extra gold as compared to uh, what they cost, but all things considered, probably not worth stacking. Though I imagine if we were able to recruit them at a higher rank so that they could get boost income up and Running, uh, then it would be more worth it. I also wonder whether it's possible for dwarfs to get a trait similar to noble on humans uh, or empire humans that uh, increases the uh, money of the territory that they're in. Though I'm not entirely sure about whether it's possible or not. Anyway, you're going to go to the Silver Pinnacle briefly and you are going to recruit. I, I don't know, I, I didn't actually have to send you there. You're going to recruit one of the regular Thunder... Yeah, just do two. Nah, just do one. <laughs> uh, do one for now. And then... 
We will need to proceed to the plain of Jar where we'll recruit a couple of organ guns to uh, be with the cannons of the other army. And then you can transfer this. I want to delete you soon. We'll also want to be transferring some stuff from all of these guys, but that'll happen in a little bit. Anyway, let's see what else we got to do this turn, shall we? Stutcher in the Jartrum. Uh, you are proceeding to the Glacial Gardens, I guess. Valkia will probably recover here somewhere. And I'm sure you'll have a fight against her sooner rather than later as well. Uh, going to encamp, set up on the road right here. Hopefully heal up so that you can auto-resolve the Glacial Gardens, but we do have to be wary of Valkia having another uh, full stack nearby. Snorri, you're going to take Dargoth real quick and just occupy it easily. Good, and Deadwood is now secured. Let's go for the Empower the Guilds and immediately start this Dwarf Mining Colony. And I guess the Dwarf Tinkerer Shop, but the other stuff can wait because it's expensive. At least until we reduce it further via any means possible. And Gromby, you've reached level 30. Lovely for you and lovely for us because you can get Mentor. And we have Fire and Fury for you. We haven't gotten Ancient Acumen though. Ah, oh, but he's ranked 30 and he hasn't really gone very deeply into his uh, red tree. I think it's time to start moving into it. And regardless of the ancient acumen, uh, it's basically a plus three recruit rank for all units all action wide is really nice though. Hmm. And I'm even foregoing lightning strike here. Still feels like it's worth it though. Ah, just do it. Ancient acumen. We have fire and fury. We can contend with that for now. For now. Anyway, you can keep going in March Dance, I think, just for a little bit longer, just to try to get to where you need to go as fast as you can, so proceed. Still have two champions of the Dark Gods to slay, after all. Who's up next? Zamnal Raki Breaker. You are... Oh, right. This whole Wurzag situation. I mean, we could start fighting Wurzag. I just feel like it'll introduce a lot of problems. Hmm... Let me, let me think about this. I uh, don't see any of his other armies nearby. He's, he's, by the looks of it, having a little bit of a tough time against some of the Karazakarak dwarfs, eh? Hmm. I was going to send this army away, but you know what? We might need armies here. In fact, I think it's time to send Burundan Stoneheart down here. Run and gun army will probably have to move north to deal with Festus. These guys are just, they're just not capable of it. I mean, they've been at war with him for so long. Plus, we still got to kill Dodan. And I am curious how the run and gun army would fare against him. Really depends on what kind of army he has, whether it's a full forest spirits or whether it has a bunch of uh, trees in there. Wurzag. I guess we're going to attack him. I mean... I just feel like it's, he's right there. He's right there. And even though this doesn't benefit us too much, he'll declare war on us eventually, right? Like, and we can't really avoid it. The main problem of this is that essentially we'd have to stick around with Veligar forever near Miragliano because the rats aren't going anywhere and they're certainly not piecing out with us. But at the same time, with these guys being at war with us, Xerxil, Karak Bufdar, and Karak Azur will all be in danger. Granted, they could all probably hold back a single stack, but a stack in a wa they would probably fail at holding. Mm. Well, I suppose if we take our Gallus, we see that there's nobody here, and as long as we're not at the current time at war with the Pirates of Sartosa, we might be able to start taking the coastline. Certainly a possibility. I guess another problem will be is armies here would start jumping over to Carrick Hearn or Carrick Dromar, though Dromar can hold. It's a little bit more of a problem with Oakenhammer, though these armies are here and might be able to reinforce. Yeah, fine. Fine, I guess that's what we're doing. You are currently at war with Argwalon, Karazakarak, and Disciples of the Maw. Who of these is the richest? I imagine it should be Karazakarak, especially since we're killing a lot of their enemies. Join War Against the Bloody Hands gives us 4k, eh? That's not bad. Take it. And thank you, Thorgrim. And we appreciate it. And soon it will come time to confederate you. We're nearly linked up. As soon as the hammers reach uh, the Legion of Asgore, and probably as soon as we take out the uh, 
Oh, we also have the rats here at the Demon Stump, the Clan Rictus to consider. All right, well, we're, we're nearly there. <laughs> Not quite yet, but nearly. Anyway, Billigar, we're going to level you in. We're going to send you in, sir. Uh, what are you missing here? We have Dowie Firepower. We probably still want Morgrim's Favored because we will still have at least some artillery in your army. And... Hmm. Dowie Firepower also does Thunder Barges, should we desire or decide to get those in here. Frankly, I'm thinking that another Engineer was probably necessary if we want to keep most of the army uh, quite, uh, quite Ranger heavy. At least it seems fairly likely, but anyway. Uh, we have Rick was... Oh, what the heck? Why can't you get Zivbar 42 pounders? You have six points in here. Three and three... What the heck? Weird. Okay, now it's unlocked. Why did we need seven? Uh, it must be a bug from uh, transferring the hero over. Kind of odd, but not super... It doesn't change much, let's say. Uh, Root Marcher, Inspiring Presence, and we don't know what your army is actually going to look like. We are going to build an army around Mr. Zamnil Rocky Breaker, of course, but this won't be said army. Also, wow, where's that? You're worth quite a few grudges, ain't ya? Ain't ya? Hardly surprising, considering he has uh, occupied so much of the uh, Badlands. And we will fight this. I don't think it's going to be a crazy difficult battle, but on the other hand, uh, this is also the first time that our rangers are doing their thing. You're going to move away just to make sure that the rats can't reach you, though. All right, and I believe we're good to go, so go we shall. All righty, Belagar and the Ghost Spells on field with a proper ranger army at last. And the good thing about the Bugman's Rangers is that they keep the Clan Angrand colors or rather than the uh, faction colors. So uh, they're nice and red and blue and just like Belagara's. And it makes this army feel a lot different, very specialized uh, by virtue of their own unique color scheme. I wish that aspect was uh, uh, enabled a little bit more like, uh, well, I mean, an army painter would be nice, but uh, <laughs> I think we'll be waiting forever for that one. Uh, but uh, for individual armies as well. Also, the war drum, or if you're wondering why I decided to get this thing, other than the uh, Bastion of the Great Cities, which gives 24 armor, which puts the Bugman's Rangers up to 74 without considering any further buffs. Uh, the war drum is a pretty darn good support. It's got the big range on it, and if you don't need the armor you can use Disdain of the Dragon Emperor, which gives reload skill and melee attack, meaning for a ranger line it enables the units in front if they get charged in melee to fight harder, and the units in the back to continue attacking with the additional range bonuses or reload bonuses, plus that immunity to psychology is quite valuable. So if the enemy gets too close to your line, you can simply switch to uh, the Disdain of the Dragon Emperor rather than the Bastion of the Great Cities, or switch around in general, and depending how the battle is going, and whether you need the armor, the psychology, the reload, and the attack, etc. Anyway, uh, here we go. The enemy are gonna get bombarded by our cannons while taking shots from our rangers. Of course, our rangers have Vanguard deployment, snipe, and... Uh, uh, and stalk, meaning the enemy can't see them at all, at least not right now, at, then at least not until we get closer. Unfortunately, they have their own uh, hidden unit, or one that I didn't spot, up here in the form of the Night Goblin Shaman, who is a decently high level, as he does have the Curse of the Bad Moon, and will cast it upon our line of rangers. Despite the fact, and interestingly enough, we can see these guys still have the hidden trait. All of these guys still have the hidden trait. So I do have to wonder how the AI was able to cast this Curse of the Bad Moon upon them. I don't think any of them are revealed. Except this one on the left. These guys are all hidden, and I'm not even sure why this one isn't hidden, but... Uh, 
Why did it, or why was it able to cast the Curse of the Bad Moon here? It's not going to do all that much damage and it's going to move away from us. I don't think it's going to kill a single unit, uh, but it will drop that debuff on us for a while. But uh, nonetheless, quite curious. I wonder if that was an example of the AI cheating and actually seeing units uh, that it shouldn't, in theory, be seeing. Not that it's super important, however, in this particular case, as the bombardment or the pincushioning continues unabated. All the units on the wall are having a pretty bad day. Even with Warzag's pretty massive physical resistance buffs, we just have too many rangers. But we do have to be wary of losing out on ammunition as only with a single engineer, and we could run out fairly quickly if we uh, fire non-stop. Move forward a little bit more, but another Curse of the Bad Moon will touch down. Looks like this particular Night Goblin Shaman does uh, really like that particular spell. Now that we can blame him, mind you. Funnily enough, I rarely see the AI spam cast in this particular spell, so it's kind of interesting, if nothing else. Anyway, we continue making our way forward a little by little. It's a very different army in terms of having just a pile of range units in it, and so it's going to function um, differently from, at the very least, the armies that we've been using so far. Obviously, this is more like the old dwarfs, where you uh, just use piles upon piles of corollers and a little bit of artillery to do your work. And, okay, looks like nobody wants to fire right now. I know, well, wouldn't you know it? Another Curse of the Bad Moon. He's not using Vindictive Glare. He's not using Itchy Nuisance or anything else. Just spamming Curse of the Bad Moon. Hmm, interesting. Well, we're going to try to move away from it. The Curse of the Bad Moon will actually follow us. Uh, unlike the first two times, decent luck on this particular Vortex not moving away. Once again, though, fortunately, the Curse is a relatively low-damaging Vortex spell, as it was more reliant on leaving a long-lasting debuff and the fact that it does not damage friendly troops, meaning you can cast it within your own lines. At least that's what I recall. I I do sometimes get confused as what's an SFO thing and what's a uh, and what's a non-SFO thing. It might damage troops in in vanilla. Hmm. Yeah, gotta, <laughs> uh, gotta be wary about getting confused about what's an SFO thing and what's not. But anyway, uh, we've repositioned at least half of our rangers so that they can fire on an angle like this, fire over the walls, and continue annoying the uh, orcs within. We need to clear out essentially a beachhead so that we can move through the uh, breaches in the walls. We've also summoned our gyrocopters on field to start annoying that night goblin shaman and have sent Belagar in to try to find and kill him as well. Getting sick of uh, those curses of the bad moon, so it's time to kill him off. Looks like he's going to go up the wall, though, and to try to hide from Belagar. And oddly enough, Belagar doesn't seem to want to head up there. Hmm. Not entirely sure why that is, but I suppose it's not important. We'll just keep on killing in the way that we do. The bombs come down from the gyrocopters with additional shots, and the ghost spells are starting to move in to help Belagar as well. Plus, we are getting ready to send the rangers in, both through the breaches, up the walls, everywhere we can, to lay down continuous fire, once this is, well, a little bit more cleared out. How's that goblin shaman? Uh, down to about 30 HP, but down go and the gyrocopters. Here come some trolls to go after the uh, ghost spells, but this might not be the best place for them to be as the cannons have moved in right there and should be able to get a bead on them. All right, gonna knock them all away a little bit with a uh, uh, with a rune of wrath and ruin. Here comes some coiler fire, and we've even got some reinforcements moving in as well. Do have to be careful of the cannons damaging our own units, though. And in fact, we're going to back off the Runesmith uh, mm, Thori Ir Throny Ironbrow, rather, as he's going to be a lot more fragile than the two Thanes. Our itchy nuisance comes down, and Wait, was that an itchy nuisance or was that something else? No, that was a nitro. Why would you use nitro? What the heck? Okay, that was just the all of those curses of the Bad Moon, which were well placed to be followed by uh, Night Shroud on units that we can already see. Okay. Not entirely sure what the deal was there, but that's all right. The enemies are dying in droves outside the breach. Cannons continue to fire through, and uh, the uh, rangers uh, help out, uh, both from an angle and directly. Belagar's right in the center of the line, but of course he's not really threatened by these basic units, and is more or less close to full HP still. 
I imagine he's probably taken more damage from the AI, or from friendly fire, rather, than from the AI. Anyway, the breach is nearly clear. More Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins, or Savage Orc Biggins, or Savage Orcs and Savage Orc Biggins make their way in, but Belagar and his Ghost Thanes continue uh, making their way forward with a little bit of help from the Zamnil Rocky Breaker, our other lord who has provided a few additional reinforcing artillery pieces, and we can see the uh, projectiles from our, uh, uh, from our grudge throwers arcing, arcing overhead. It's also time for the rangers to make their way in now that the lords and thanes have cleared their way through. Very nice, and boar boys will attempt to the charge. But now we've got some good positions that were taken. There we go. Rangers gonna go up on the walls and start firing down. While the other rangers continue shooting overhead. Now, how's our ammunition looking? About half of the ammunition, a little bit less on most of our units. Starting to run a little bit low. I'm gonna have to occasionally use a restock, but with only one engineer, it's not a lot of restock. And frickin' Wurzag, he's just been spamming that... Uh, how much does it cost for him, just out of curiosity? Uh, oh, it's free for him? Huh. I didn't know Vindictive Glare was free for... Oh, wait, no, this is a bound Vindictive Glare. He can't have been... No, 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 we saw way more than two. That wasn't a Vindictive Glare, that was a Gaze of Mork. Or at least that uh, must have been, I didn't see, but... Uh, just want to see here. Eh, three mana, okay, yeah, he can spam that for ages. He can. He's got Gaze of Mork for days, and ooh, using it on the Ghost Thane is a much better idea, as it'll actually uh, damage King Lun Iron Hammer, uh, the ghostly and original. Alright, but now most of the orcs are trying to book their way away from us, and oh my lord, Wurzag, stop that. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna get annoying real quick, but not to worry. Uh, the rangers are in the settlement now and will continue to advance uh, by fire and movement. Uh, one set of rangers will move forward. Uh, like so, while the other one stays still and fires, this one will then take position, and then the other one will move forward. And of course, we will have the uh, Thanes and the Lords out front, so it's unlikely that anything can charge through, at least over on this side. Looks like the enemy will try to send a Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggin unit through. Oh, just regular Savage Orc Boar Boys. And to try to catch out some of the Thanes back here, but uh, Thrawny Ironbrow is still back there, and we've still got some rangers on the walls as well. Yar boars ain't climbing those walls, I wager. I'm gonna slow the enemy down with the Rune of Slowness as well, so now they're down to 43 speed, though that's still, uh, and still pretty darn quick. It's still fast enough to catch the rangers, I'd wager. Um, but which rangers are you gonna cast? <laughs> Either they run out of the walls, or they head towards us here and then take shots to the back, or they sit there and take shots from every side. Not a, uh, not a smart move on this pile of boar boys, but, well, that's the Irks for ya. All right, a few more shots, and these guys are going to book it on out of there. Frickin' Wurzag continues spamming his spells, and we're trying to go after him now. Uh, sent Belagar and uh, Zamnil after him, but he goes past his barrier uh, to hide and run away, and probably cast a few more of those spells. Oh, hey, uh, it's almost like he doesn't want to fight. Anyway, I'm going to speed it up a little bit while we work our way through the barrier, and Wurzag continues spamming his spell, though, to be fair, he hasn't actually got a lot of kills with it. He's mostly only done damage with it. And 5k is... it's not nothing, but it's not crazy either. I would wager that that Curse of the Bad Moon did more. But at the same time, so did the Curse of the Bad Moon cost a lot of mana, and frankly, probably used up uh, all of this, uh, uh, all of this army's ma mana, or most of this army's mana, I should say. Or perhaps we'd meet a few more brain bursters and, uh, or busters rather. Now it's bursta, and feet of Gork. Hmm. Alright, well with that, Wurzag will break, never giving us a proper fight in, well, in a lord-on-lord -lord fight, as I would have had a Belagard duel him, but uh, uh, it was nice of him systematically working our way through this breach against all of those, uh, against all those orcs, and it's nice to see coral-filled armies for the dwarfs once more.
Yeah, Banner of Eternal Flame, not bad. But anyway, there we go. Very, very nice. A lot of annoying magics uh, coming in from the enemy, but it didn't confer a ton of kills to them with only 45 rangers lost and possibly some of those to friendly fire. Otherwise, a sort of classic dwarfen uh, siege and taking of the enemy settlement. Uh, something Thorek could be proud of as it was Pretty much all crossbows. Granted, we had some cannon in here, but nonetheless. And nonetheless, it was nice and it worked nice. Occupy the place. And what do we have here in Maragliano? Ah, oh, we can upgrade it immediately, though for more expense than I would normally perhaps like. I think we have no choice but to build the gate here, at least right now, and there's that physical resistance buff for Belagar for defeating Wurzag. Pretty solid buff, I should say, and I would actually probably prefer it on a... Uh, on a... whatchamacallit, on a... Anvil of Doom a riding a lord. But anyway, and this does give us the option of still going to Tobaro if we want to continue attempting to pursue the Skaven, but now that we're at war with the Bloody Hands, we need to probably head to Verdanos. I think in light of this, Belagar, I feel like because you're sort of doing classic army thing, hmm, does that mean we should switch out the cannons for... I mean, you don't, you buff bold throwers, you don't buff grudge throwers. I was just thinking of giving you the grudge thrower anyway. Maybe just the single uh, grudge settler one. And if we get more, we get more. Like this. I just like the idea of more monstrous impact. And yes, the cannons have it too, but more monstrous impact in a wider area might not be a bad thing. And we'll think about what we do with the rest. Oh, if only there was an easy way to transfer the Iron Drakes and the Flame Cannons, the Grudge Settlers, up to our Fire Army. But I don't believe that there's an easy way. Where's the closest underway uh, uh, underway passage? I think Carrick Norn might be the furthest or the closest that we can get up there, right? There isn't one all the way over here. Hmm... Yeah, there's one in Krakadrak, isn't there? Oh, there isn't one in Krakadrak. Oh, man. Yeah, that's not gonna... That's not gonna help that much. Ah. Unless there's one... Wait, can you see it in Hidden Territory? Yes, you can. So, there's one all the way down here, but there isn't one where Grom Brindle uh, started, which is unfortunate. But oh well, I will deal with it, not to worry. It's not like it's a necessity, it's just something I would like. Uh, Calendy, bro, the rest of you are looking good to me. You don't need to move, but the tech thief, or one of the tech thieves, certainly does. Head to the Volary. Let's see what we... Oh, wow, a thousand to steal? That's a lot of money. Damn. I mean, I guess we have to keep leveling you, but that's a lot of cash. You better not fail this after spending this much money. Okay, he succeeded. Good. 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 <laughs> I take it there's no ancillaries that would uh, enable you to succeed more. I don't think there's a lot of ancillaries of that type in existence anyway. It's mostly ancillaries that prevent other heroes uh, from hurting you. I don't think we can reduce hero action cost by ancillary that we have, specifically for the dwarfs. I mean, different factions are uh, different, obviously. Mm, yeah, I'm not saying anything here. Gonna have to take a look at some oath gold items later on, but once again, once the ancestral tombs are done, we've got 3,000, 4,000, possibly five or 6,000 to spend within the next few turns. At least it'll mean a lot of upgrades very quickly, but it'll mean we have no oath gold remaining after that. Anyway, uh, anything else we need to do this turn? I don't believe there is, or if there is, I no longer remember it, so... Assuming there's no Diplo and there don't look to be, and we're looking good to end the turn. So skip, skip, and yes, we still have the Runehelm of Zufbar uh, uh, battle for Gromby. But I want to save it for a little bit. The reasoning being that if we need an emergency casualty or punishment buff, or perhaps an emergency 500 grudges, that might be the way to go. On the other hand, the faster we get this, the faster we get the... Alright, the set, right? The set has plus one control for all provinces. That's good. It's good. Mm. We'll give it a little bit. See how our grudges do. We got five turns. I don't see us reaching 100%. This is probably the most likely we'll ever get, or the closest we'll ever get to 100%. I don't think it's possible, because now that we've knocked out Mr... Uh, 
Wurzag. Where are we going to pick up that huge pile of grudges again that's nearby? Are the Chaos Dwarfs worth any grudges? No, they're basically worthless. Difficult. <laughs> All right, there's a few more uh, decent uh, grudgy places out here in uh, Grimgore's Boys territory, but certainly not enough to push us to 100. Maybe we could just barely manage to reach 75. I really wanted to get to 100 at this one time, but... Hmm. Oh, wow. Even a lot of the Badlands territories aren't worth a lot. I was thinking perhaps if we were to confederate right now, not that we'd be able to afford it because yeah, it's a lot of armies. Ooh, hammers. Mm, gotta keep an eye on those. I also noticed that I feel like the AI is cheating with regards to this as well. It's suspicious how often we've seen the AI with the gyrocopters with troll hammers and with the uh, flame cannons. Because gyrocopters and flame cannons are only awarded at the 100% age of reckoning. So the AI is basically constantly getting this for free when it's ludicrously difficult for the player. Unless it's my game that's still bugged, and 42k just seems ridiculous. Especially after we've completed multiple legendary grudges. But anyway, that's fine, not a big deal. Let's uh, keep on going. Just another little uh, element of additional added difficulty to this thing. Keep that goal in sight. Anyway, let's see. Warhost of Jar, will you move on in? Zhao Ming, you want us to join War Against the Blessed Dread? Oh, for a decent amount of cash, mind you. And probably something we'll do in a little bit. Just for the money, most likely, as we probably wouldn't be going all the way down there now. Why did we just gain a vision of a huge tract of territory down here? Ah, that's the Cult of Sigmar with whom we are trading. I also see and the Coronate forces are on the approach. That's good. A new regional power. Urson Revivalists. Yeah, thanks, game. <laughs> Who's the real regional power here? Uh, anyway, Snorri, you... Oh, you can't reach Black Pillar in one go? Well, that's a shame. Uh, go right here, then. Like so, and we'll see how these guys react to all this. And this is also not worth any grudges. Oh, game, game. Why? Autoresolve and occup... Uh, yes, yes. I, I keep thinking that up here is the... Uh, uh, is chaos territory, so I, it keeps going in my mind that uh, we need to uh, sack everything, but not here. Not yet. Not now. Anyway, uh, Malachi, well, I guess we're starting from the top again. Can you reach the Volary? You can't reach it anyway? Pff, okay, well, that's... <laughs> wasted a lot of money getting this guy on the field where... Huh, wait, but perhaps you could reach the Volary if you didn't go through the granite spikes. Perhaps. So, let's auto resolve this and find out. Maybe I'm wrong. And maybe it is, in fact, possible. Occupy... Ooh, wow. I should have actually sacked it with the other guy. Uh, we're not keeping these territories, so just sack it. Huh. I wonder what level the Volary is. It's like tier 4. Ah, eh, sack it anyway. And this was tier 3, and I have already is tier 5. But it is in Chaos territory. You have Steel Tech for a couple more turns. I would like you to move out here. And the Fortress of Eyes is also Chaotic Wasteland. Yeah, I'm still probably not going to keep all of that. It's too much. Uh, it's too much. I wonder if above Dragon's Crossroad, Bloodwind Keep and Iron Storm are frozen, or whether they're Chaotic Wasteland. I guess we'll find out in a turn or so. Now, Malachi. Now you're able to reach the Volary. All right, so I guess I wasn't wrong about that. A beautiful Occupy. And move here. And we have to figure out, do we sack it? Or do we take it? It's worth a lot of cash. I'm inclined to say we sack it. And we can still trade it to our allies. And it's still a red territory. And yeah, we can get it at a very high level. But I kind of don't want to deal with it. I'll let Boris hold these places. Uh, what I would like to see, however, is can we increase the sacking? No, you already have the prospect. All right, fine. I'll resolve this because <laughs> I can't believe this is the garrison of a tier five. I think one thing that, uh, uh, that well, one of the many things that SFO does really well is it powers up garrisons quite a bit. Uh, it certainly makes 
things like this a lot more difficult, but it also means that uh, uh, high-tier settlements automatically have good garrison, and any military structures typically give them garrison as well. So you can't just easily or super easily take a, a super high-tier settlement like this. All right, now you, I think, will... Yeah, you're not going to be useful anymore. We do want to get a new guy on the field when Zatan comes in, but you are not that guy. You are not that guy. You know who should be the guy? Wait. I think Mr. Kurgan Ranulfsson... Uh, yeah, okay. You know what? Because he's level 25. I think he's a good lord to get the... Vomik, what are you doing? Go away. All right, King Lon, I'm gonna need you to hunt down Vomik because this is this is this is untenable. Uh, go here. What we'll do with Mr. Kurgan? Oh, look at this guy. He's moving to the Demon Stump. He could take that for us. That would be just lovely. Uh, Kurgan, we're going to reset your skills because you have Wall Breaker, which is completely useless, and Invoke Runes of Alea needs to be undone, and we need to invoke Runes of Grugne instead. I don't... Grungni is vastly superior to Grimnir. Four leadership for dwarves who don't care about leadership uh, pretty much at all because their leadership is super high. And three melee attack versus five physical resistance and ten armor for the entire army. Why the disparity? Uh, I need to uh, I need to think that through a little bit. Uh, Ruins of Alea are actually pretty okay. Vigor loss reduction is always valuable, but it isn't as valuable in vanilla as it is in SFO. Casualty punishment is also nice, but uh, I... I don't think I've ever or would ever pick anything outside of Invoke Runes of Gregni, and that usually speaks to poor design. You should always be having to think, ooh, one of these options, it should be a hard choice, but here, it never is. Anyway, I'll reset all skills for you, sir. You're going to get that Zatan defeat trait, and then we'll use this random lord, or this random, it doesn't really matter which random lord, to... Uh, Continue moving out here. And to transfer units. Lovely. Ooh, look at that money. It's, it'll all be gone within the next couple minutes. <laughs> uh, of necessity, mind you. And speaking of money being gone, Architect Zufbarden, it's your time to shine. Well, on the other hand, you're one of the ones that make sure that not all the money is gone. Uh, wait, we're going... We're not going to Vard Camp, right? No. Monolith of Katam... You're kind of far, and I think at 2.5k we could just build it without sending uh, Zufbarden all the way back there. Doomkeep will upgrade you and you for free. All right, that saves us a ton of money immediately. And you will proceed to Sarlik at no, to the Forbidden Citadel in four turns, and the Tower of Crack in two turns. Okay, yeah, yeah, so we need to go for the Tower of Crack first to upgrade this, although it's actually not that expensive. And then the Forbidden Citadel, and then all the way through Winterpyre to Krakadrak, where we will max out the buildings that are being built there. It will be complete, and then we set sail all the way out there. Alright, Architect has nearly completed building up Norska. Go, go, go. Plus 65 income from all building. Damn! Wait, plus 65? Huh. I wonder how much that would be in our mo... How are you getting plus 65? We got four dwarf... Okay, yeah, we got four dwarf brides in here, plus... Uh, okay, Mason does nothing for this. Must have some other kind of sources. Or plus 65 for all buildings. Huh. It wouldn't just be dwarf brides accounting for this. And I don't think any of the other ancillaries... So these are for specific things. Gem cutters and obsidian quarries. Mines, gold mines, etc., etc. Hmm. Curious. Not a bad thing, but curious. Anyway, uh, we'll deal with that later. Grombie. Oh, okay, you need to start healing up. Move while healing now in camp. Or possibly actually jump or underway stance this way. And then one more jump, and then we'll be able to fight. Good. Uh, next up, we get Ungrim. I believe you have one more auto resolve to you, and Cobalt will have one more as well. Cobalt, travel this way, because Ungram can travel this way, I guess. Just to make sure that if there is an army here, it'll have nowhere to go. Uh, it's the likelihood that these guys attack us here. 
mean, we're not at war with them, so I'm going to assume that they're not, that they would be crazy to do so, but, uh, well, the AI is known for doing crazy things on occasion. Uh, on the other hand, it's also known for being a coward, so who knows. Attack. I'm really surprised that there's, like, no grudges on the Chaos Dwarfs. Shouldn't Chaos Dwarfs automatically have just a ton of grudges on them? Alright, Mountains of Morn, like all their territories. Uh, don't need the building here. Valley of Horns. For now, keep the watch room, though. I guess. We may need defenses here, and we may need one at Grimtop and stuff like that. I mean, in theory, we shouldn't need them, but... We also do want to move down here. It would be nice. It would be nice to actually take all of this and just let Cathay and the Empire have... Well, Cathay and uh, we'll deal with the rest of the territories and that are up here. Festus, I take it, sacked Ergig. Or, huh, no he didn't. Then what the heck's he doing? Alright, I don't know what he's doing, but uh, we'll deal with him in due time. Yuri Burnbright, Brynbright, Callum Deepbrow, and Burundan Stoneheart. Okay, I'm gonna... I, I don't want to think about you right now, so we're gonna do other things. Ah! Skaven! You did it! You moved! By yourself! What the heck is this? I'm shocked. I'm shocked and whatever the opposite of a pole does. I don't know what it is because I've never been. Uh... There's also an army of the Pirates of Sartos and March Stats. Why is everybody moving close to us? Tempting us into the fight. Oh, it's tempting. Everything's tempting. Mm. They're actually not particularly strong. They are allied with the Skaven. We'd have to cross the river to... Actually, we wouldn't have to cross the river because we automatic... Damn it, it's in March Stance. Uh, do we declare war on them as well? is creating quite the problem for... The world. We'll be well and truly completely surrounded by enemies there. Also gotta remember that there are... These guys are up here as well. Oh, Durthu's probably gonna... Yeah, we're gonna have to kill Durthu at some point. We can't have him take uh, key dwarfen settlements. Especially. Sorry, Durthu. Uh, we're gonna attack this. <laughs> I wasn't gonna, but I feel like I didn't want to pass up this opportunity. I know it's only one army, but also Rafrafa is worth a decent amount of uh, this stuff. Ah, oh, man, if we could take all of this at the same time and not have to worry about this faction and then start moving up north, that would be just swell. Watch Scarbrand declare war on us. All right, Belagar, this is your episode, I guess. Uh, Zamnil, go here. You're gonna reinforce. I don't think you actually need to, but, you know. Play it safe. This can't run. You're at war with the Chevalier de Leonis and the Cult of Sigmar. Who's willing to give us more money to join this war? Uh, we will join your war against the Pirates of Sartosa. You will give us 2.4k. Not a lot. What about Cult of Sigmar? We will join your war against Pirates of Sartosa. You will give us 1.1k. What is this? Join war, Pirates of Sartosa. I guess we could get the military axis, why not? Maintain some friendliness with these guys. Oh, why do I do this? This feels like a not great idea, but it's too late now. It's too late. It's been, it's been decided. Belagar, let's level you up before we go on in. Uh, you are missing Gather the Old Clans, but it isn't super useful right now. We don't need Blessed by Grugne, and we don't need Blessed by or Honored by Grimnir. We have Tactician and Thunderer, so I think for your red line, you're basically done, assuming we don't add some Thunder Barges to you, and we might. We might. It feels like the capstone unit, so it feels like it's appropriate to have at least a few of them. Uh, but anyway, especially for legendary lords. Uh, I guess we're going hard to hit on, yeah? There isn't really anything else that we want to put uh, points into, so let's do that. Hard to hit. And I guess we'll level your ghost pals. Uh... I still haven't decided between sharpened weapons and hardened armor. I like the idea of hardened armor on the Bugmans, especially when in combination of the war drum, giving an additional 24 armor. It seems pretty significant. And... But only 10 armor, as opposed to 10 missile strength and 10 weapon strength. Is a, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's quite as good, does it? 
Maybe it's just me. Uh, spell resistance. Ooh, you know what? Let's get the spell resistance right now. We probably won't need it against Rose Nord here. But I'm willing to bet we will need it against the Skaven because of their constant bloody spamming of that uh, warp lightning ability. Uh, not that I don't do the same thing when I play the Skaven, and I think everybody does because warp lightning is such a great, cheap, spammable, effective spell. Uh, but anyway, oh. You don't have Deadly Onslaught. Take Deadly Onslaught. And you didn't get Revered Thane. Oh, game. Why why, why AI so not good that points? It feels like it would be an easy thing to program. Especially just go through every single hero and make it automatic so that the AI always gets the same stuff. So at least it doesn't get stuff that's awful. Anyway, uh, Banner of Eternal Flame on... You can put it on the artillery... And we could put it on the Rangers. I would normally put it on the War Drum, but the Rangers have Vanguard Deployment and Snipe, whereas the Cannons and stuff do not. You know, let's put it on the Engineer for now. And I'll think about it. For now, let's kill this army. Go. Alrighty, here we go, a field battle for the rangers now, and this should feel a little bit different than the siege battle, because we can make a greater use of our vanguard deployment as well as our stock and snipe. We've divided our army into three distinct groups, uh, four units of rangers on each flank hidden from the enemy, uh, but close enough to fire upon them, three more together with all of our lord and heroes to protect the artillery pieces who are going to start focusing down and the enemy mortars back there uh, that's the plan anyway let's see how long we can fire upon the enemy before our rangers are found out of course we do need to destroy these mortars but at least the rangers are safe from them speaking of the rangers they are sniping away the first unit of sartosa free company gets absolutely riddled with quarrels and down to 30 percent h or so, um, but we're going to have to switch fire to these deck droppers lest they close the distance and discover the rangers there. Fortunately, they're quite fragile as well and will melt away after a couple of volleys. Same thing happening on this side, though we target the man-eaters first as they are quite threatening. And not as threatening as the ogre pistol man-eater variation, but still threatening enough, though I have a very, very healthy respect and or fear of the ogre pistols. You know, once again, I, I use them quite a bit in my own Aranessa campaign, and those things just rip lords, heroes, any single entity really apart like nothing. And uh, can't let them uh, knock out any of our ghost pals. Anyway, uh, even with Ethereal, they'd be very much in danger. Looks like our rangers continue to obliterate the enemy flanks without uh, any kind of reprisal. Once again, that snipe and stock is really working for us. So we do summon the uh, units of gyrocopters, try to help Help out with the uh, uh, with the enemy mortars, and then drop them down on the deck gunners. It was taking a little bit too long to work the enemy mortars down with just our own artillery pieces. Not a big deal, though. Looks like the animated hulks have been pretty much destroyed. Animated hulks also a great unit, in particular in combination with the uh, zombie pirate gunnery mobs bombers. But the enemy doesn't have that combo here. The rest of the enemy line is making its way towards us, but the balance of power has already shifted to about 85% in our favor. The rangers continue firing any on anything they can reach, and it looks like now the enemy has reached the rangers that make up our quote-unquote center-slash-melee line. Beligar and his two thanes march their way forward to fight some man-eaters in the center line. And artillery will keep firing as it has already begun to do so, specifically trying to focus down the man-eaters with the cannons while the grudge thrower goes after the enemy infantry. But it looks like it won't need to do so for much longer. The rangers have ripped apart pretty much all the enemy range units and only the melee units uh, remain and a few more volleys will end this battle in our favor. It does look like the enemy has managed to move in a unit of uh, Morngulls over on this side. We pop that rune of slowness on them. Of course, these guys were invisible, hidden due to their own stock ability. Uh, but between the rune of slowness and once the cannons get to fire the monstrous impact, these guys are going to be real slow and not super liable to actually get into range of our uh, 
of our rangers. There we go, they'll melt away before even a single shot from the cannons makes their way, or makes its way towards them, and the rest of the army will book it on out of there. And oh my lord, their lord just disappears in a hail of quarrels and cannon fire. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And there we go, chase them down a little bit, and it looks like not even the Sartosans are gonna be able to escape. Not that it would have mattered anyway, because they're in march stance, but yeah, ouch. All right, very, very nice. Uh, stock, snipe, and vanguard deployment. An extremely nasty combination on those bugmans. And uh, the poor army got sort of ripped apart without knowing uh, from where. Though the AI does a poor job of generally reacting to uh, sniping units. So that's hardly surprising. On the other hand, some of us, uh, me, uh, <laughs> can sometimes do a fairly poor job of reacting to it as well. I've certainly fallen prey to those darn dark elven shades suddenly appearing and taking a few nice volleys uh, and uh, being impressed with the AI for using them as such. Anyway, I'm going to execute and loot rather than heal, mostly because the damage is insignificant for us to be concerned with. Now, we have the rats. I guess we can move some other units around and then go forth to fight the rats, but I do think that we should knock this army out while it isn't near to the other armies. Mm. Also, are you able to recruit troops here? If we take a... if we use some of our money, we'd be able to recruit globally recruit some stuff, which might be worth our time right now. So that this army could act on its own, because if it can act on its own, it could protect Miragliano on its own, or it could move to Rafrafa or something. There's certainly, uh, there's certainly decent argument to be made for doing so. But anyway, let's keep moving everybody else around first, and then we'll figure it out. Callan Deeprow, you have your first two land ships. You are too short. Uh, I... I'm going in the book. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, once again, I just, I just, I, I really wonder whether the uh, whoever was making that, uh, uh, whoever was making that trailer knew how many memes uh, it would spawn. But anyway, uh, the <laughs> land ships, land ships. Uh, we could get one. They're also super expensive. I, I don't really want you to sit here for this many turns, just get a single land ship, though. I think perhaps... Hmm, what we could do is we could get a couple of war wagons to hold the place. Uh, do we have any... Hmm. It might actually be a decent idea. And they're quite good at sniping, and more importantly, they can reload stuff. At least until we can afford the land ships. We know that Vissenland and Nuln, I believe, can't build land ships as yet, because they haven't upgraded to uh, haven't upgraded to the town. But we can build war wagons out of them as soon as we have our outpost finished in two turns. Meaning that's probably what we should do. All right. So, Callan, what you need to do then is acquire more Slayer pirates. Or build some gyro bombers. Hmm. Either one would be fine for the whole run and gun situation. Now let's move you up here for now. I don't believe you need to transfer any units, but you do need more stuff. Yori Brinbright. You were saving some of these units to transfer to certain armies. These two have to go across the mountains. I was saving the grudge throwers. It would actually work quite well in this army. Hmm... Depending on... Okay, wait. Here's what we'll do. You are going to go here and encamp to Karak Raziak. You will also need to construct long beards. Oh, man. There's only one... There's only two global re local recruitment. It's going to take you ages to build those guys. Uh, I don't want to pay for global recruitment, though. Can we build them out of Karakadrin? No. We can build them out of Castle Drakenhauer as a temple hub. No. Actually, we'd need to... Well, we would be able to build them next turn. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I keep jumping all over the place. Mordheim and Essen. Are you guys ready to trade Obersteyer or Schwarzhafen for either one? Uh, Schwarzhafen, 108. Or Obersteyer, 97. Essen, 35. Hmm, wait. 
more time. 62. Ah, okay. Well, let's see how much they're worth if we build them another military building. It just takes absolute ages to do so, but... Oh, man, and these military buildings are quite expensive, too. These ones are cheaper, although I'm not entirely sure... Hmm. Oh, actually, this would be a good time to make a comparison. Uh, let us build... Uh, the siege workshop here, or the ranger up. Does it matter? It might matter, it might not matter. Maybe we build one different one at Nagenhof as well. Let's build a siege workshop here for one turn. And we'll build the Arms Forge here. I'd like to compare the worth of Mordheim and Essen based off of this. Although, wait, right now we need to see whether their worths differ. Mordheim is worth 62. Essen is worth 62. They're both worth the exact same, which is interesting because Essen has pastures in it, which Mordheim does not. And for the Imperials, Mordheim actually has a landmark location, but it seems that neither one is actually worth anything to the AI. Which is disappointing, but what can you do? It's almost like they don't want landmarks. How dare they? Uh, anyway, Yuri Brinbright. Assuming that we transfer the grudge throwers. It is time. Or we can wait, because you could actually keep these Ongbeards with great weapons if we wait for two turns, because call upon the old oaths, or oaths of old, will give us two grudge slayer, grudge uh, settler capacity. <laughs> Meaning you're probably going to go up here. I don't like having these guys sort of sit around and do nothing, but they need to recruit and then move out, so we'll give them the chance to do so. Belagari are going to move and fight again. Dimzad, you're fine. Tech Thief, Gilded Stone. You're kind of needed here to keep an eye on things. Uh, 57 and 7. 23 and 5. All right, go to Myrmidons. Keep an eye on that. We need to go here before these guys build up an army, or to Xerxil or Verdanos. I'm willing, let's say, to sacrifice Verdanos. Kind of grown necessary by me being impatient and declaring war on everybody like an idiot. Uh, but, you know, uh, gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, let's keep moving. Constructors. You've constructed stuff... Oh, it's still expensive to build the Feast Hall here, eh? Surprisingly expensive. You're in Castle Drakenhof, right? This is with 45% reduction. Ah, eh, just build it. Just build it. Don't need anything at Zufbar, or at least not right now. Oakenhammer, you're all fine. Grom Peak, we could use the Herder's Hall, Guild Hall, whatever upgrade, but I think for now we move to Waldenhof. And then... Ow! Wait a moment. You could have gone to Essen to reduce the cost of this. Could you reach Mordheim from where you are? No, but you can reach Essen, so... Mordheim... We'll build a cheaper building there. Yes, I'm going to nickel and dime absolutely everything. It's completely necessary. All right, I guess we should go to Karakadrin to build this, or build it cheaper anyway. Uh, yeah, now you should be pretty cheap. 1650. Actually, not as cheap as I'd like. And you know what? We did want some more quarrelers in this army, so let's temporarily upgrade the clan barracks here at Waldenhof. It's fine. And we could then have one army, well, both armies recruit at the same time. You can then both proceed to Essen, like so. And yeah, sorry about this uh, aspect of the admin for uh, those who don't like it that much, uh, but it's necessary. Uh, huh. Also upgrade the clan barracks to tier 2. Now, nah, then it's hard to make a comparison. I go for the arms forge here. I wish it would reduce the construction time, and we do have the ability to do so at the... Uh, uh, in the research, but not right now. Anyway, you're both going to Great Skull Lakes to build this for cheaper, and this for cheaper, and this for cheaper. Need as much growth as we can get here for Dorjni Vort. You're up next. And we'll build you and you and the refectory. Now, do we need to proceed to Saber Mountain? Oh, most definitely we do. Alright, so you guys are going this way. We'll need another constructor down here as well. Uh, if we can... Ah, another conventional. Oh, we have three conventional engineers. Oh, this is fantastic. I wish I wasn't building them all in the same place, but this is now three that will provide additional bonuses to artillery. Once we have our new super artillery lord that has just crazy amounts of artillery, and this should be pretty interesting. Anyway, uh, who else needs to move before we fight again with Belagar because he does nothing but fight today? Once again, it's his day. He deserves some fun. Uh, Ekich of Mordheim, you're up next, sir. 
What were we going for? Brass Lung, Druin of Grimnir... You know what? The Missile Resistance actually have decent pick on these guys, especially Belagar and the two Thanes, because they're always up front and uh, getting uh, hit by our own units. Ancestral Might, we do need Revered Thane on you. Arun Smith, you are missing or trying to get to Rune Masters, so let's get you Item Drop Chance, and then on to Rune Smithing. I wanted mostly the chance of Interception, because it'll be quite useful against those filthy, filthy rats. And Zufbar 42 Pounders, is at last available. Yes. Maybe I should have gone for a chance of intercepting enemies for plus 30% after all, but anyway. For now, we have to go after the rats. And so go after the rats we shall. He's gonna run, I take it. And there's a good claw. Oh. If he's in range of Tobaro, oh, and he is. If we still have enough movement remaining to land a Tobaro, and I don't know that we will. But this would be amazing. If we could knock out Ikit's army and the army at Tobaro, and we, we'd be able to hit Skavenblight with this army alone, without even needing uh, Zamnal to reinforce. Though we could use him to reinforce, mind you, but... Uh, I'm salivating at the thought. Anyway. We also gotta, you know, deal with these armies without taking too much in the way of casualties after all, and at sea, this might be a difficult battle. But nonetheless, uh, let's go. Alright, here we go, Belagar's third battle of the day. I mean, I did say it was Belagar's show today, and he damn well is gonna prove it. Now, we did deploy our Bugman's Rangers forward again, though it looks like these guys uh, got immediately identified. I'm not entirely sure by what. Uh, does the Assassin, or does one of the units in the enemy army have a further identification range, perhaps, uh, than normal units do? Because they shouldn't have been identified immediately. Uh, good to know, though. Going to be a little bit more wary of the Skaven doing that in the future. But for now, uh, we have a similar type of deployment as before. Four units of rangers here, four units of rangers here, moving in four-man squads, uh, whereas the others are left behind to defend our artillery pieces. I probably actually should have switched the war drum first to the reload buff, uh, the Stain of the Dragon Emperor switching back to Bastion of the Great Cities when the enemy got close, but uh, I was a little bit busy microing. And these guys out here. As was necessary. Anyway, our cannons are gonna target the mutant rat ogres. Definitely have to worry about these guys. Though they are uh, not the b biggest threat to the rangers because they're single entities and they get sniped relatively easily. The problem is they have very high melee attack and magical attacks. The uh, heroes, the ghost boys, they're very, very low in HP to compensate for the fact that they're ethereal and have massive physical resistance. Uh, the problem there is that a couple Kits from these uh, mutant rat ogres could easily knock one out, so we're gonna have to stay back. Anyway, an enemy assassin tries to make its way towards us, but we're going to let it go in favor of trying to attack the much more threatening units like these Death Globe bombardiers. Certainly, a volley or two from them into a unit of rangers will kill off said unit of rangers, so we can't allow it. Uh, continuing to get support from our artillery pieces, and the assassin continues trying to chase down these bugman's rangers. Probably a good move on his part, kills one of the rangers and continues chasing them down. We're trying to send Belagar and the ghost pals towards him, but uh, they're going to be a lot slower than the assassin is. We've also summoned our unit of gyrocopters on the field. They pop their emergency repairs pretty much immediately from uh, taking fire from the enemy rattling guns and death globes, and we're just going to send them into melee to distract them and keep them away from the rest of the army as long as long as possible. And the assassin has unfortunately found our, unfortunately for him, uh, Belagar and the ghosts of the... <laughs> oh, that mutant rat ogre trying to charge downhill to get towards uh, towards the ghost immediately gets knocked down. And it looks like these guys have been knocked down like a dozen times, both of them, uh, throughout this entire battle by those cannons. Really working out decently well. We got other rangers trying to focus those mutant rat ogres down as they are quite threatening. Uh, the enemy 
zone range support is in pretty bad shape as the Death Globe's rattling guns and the Giselles and other rattling guns are all in bad shape and are still fairly far away from our main line due to a combination of the artillery and the gyrocopters annoying them. Unfortunately, over on this side, a unit of Death Runners hidden because they also have stock and did manage to catch one of our units of Rangers. This is not a good matchup and the Rangers will try to back away while we try to get a little bit of support going. Ooh, nice shot from whatever that was. I don't know what that was, but it was a nice shot. Hmm. Uh, might have been a shuriken. Is that an Ashen Sorcerer? Warp Star, whatever. Uh, close enough. And yeah, look at these Death Runners absolutely ripping through these Rangers, and we're going to have to try to move them off field. They just don't have the melee defense or melee attack to deal with these guys. Kind of a great matchup for the uh, uh, for the Death Runners. On the other hand, the rest of the enemy army, whether it be the uh, what is it, Eshin Triads or just Death Run, not more Death Runners here, and Eshin Triads. We're working together with some Plague Monks and Storm Vermin. Nice variety in the enemy army, but we do have the support of our War Drum as well as our heroes here, so it's a lot less dangerous than it is for the uh, for the exposed unit of Rangers out there. Most of the enemy army fails to reach our lines. The enemy Lord gets caught by the uh, uh, by Belagar and the Ghost Boys, though I think if I were to play this again, I would have probably separated these guys to help hold back the tide here. Not that we really took much damage here anyway. Anyway, anyway, it looks like the battle is nearly in our favor and ooh the death globe bombardiers return and get a few volleys off or well a single volley off though fortunately with a badly damaged unit it doesn't appear to be able to kill too many and must make sure to melt these guys away lest they get another shot out and it looks like we'll succeed at doing so and the death globes will book it on out of there the enemy lord will get run down by Belagar and the ghosts and the rest of his army will shatter. I guess actually fast enough to catch him. He just... Is he dead? I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I guess Belagar kind of kicked him to death. All right. Well, there we go. A very solid fight. We killed pretty much the entire army with taking very little damage to our main stack. Once again, having a lot of fun with Belagar's new army, especially considering it works completely differently from the rest. Uh, lots of damage to one single unit of rangers, but uh, hey, maybe we can heal up after the battle, considering how much damage we dealt and only one of our units was hurt. Let's find out. All right, not too bad. Minimal losses on most of our units, with one exception I did screw up and allow one of the Bugman's Rangers to get too close to one of the enemy units of Death Runners. Uh, got a little cocky with them, I guess, and uh, the Death Runners just ripped through them like a knife through butter. They, uh, I don't think they downed a single one of them as they were ripped apart, but that's hardly surprising. That's a horrifically bad matchup in melee between the two. Uh, not to worry, though, the rest of the army did well, and we'll still be able to heal them to full, because they're pretty much the only unit that got hurt, and not being a single entity, and they get plenty in the way of heals. Lovely. All right, now we need to figure out whether we can actually land here or not. Hey, seasoned campaigner as well. Very, very nice, sir. Uh, what we want to do here... Honored by Grimnir, gather the old clans... Still kind of tempted by that miner's instinct. Though, will we have enough space? Well, we would. We would, if we were to get that. Still enough to power a Belagar, though he is decently strong right now. You know what, I think we start popping points into the Miner's Instinct. Just because. I really don't want these guys jumping around. Uh, then we'll level up the rest of them and... Uh, I wasn't intending to originally get Beric Var Handshake. Oh, another point in Zipbar 42 pounders. You know what, let's do that. For clearing massive piles of enemies, it's going to be more useful. And Dowie Authority. And you know what? Belagar. I think we're going to give you the Master Rune of Spite. I mean, currently it's held by Kalan Deepra, who's doing absolutely nothing, and he's probably not going to be in combat for the next ten turns. In fact, none of these three armies will be. I mean, okay, I picked the wrong one. Uh, none of these three armies will be, so their items are up for grabs, effectively. We can redo their items later. 
But if they're not going to fight for so, so many turns, we should make use of them. Uh, Rune of Courage, Rune of Battle... Frankly, the Rune of the Furnace shouldn't even be on you. That was just temporary. And I don't know about the Talisman of Preservation Armor, Fortune, and whatnot. Once again, I'll take another look at the items. Uh, if you're wondering why, it's just that we have a limited number of them, and I'd like to once again wait until we can get Oath Gold items, because that'll really decide as to what we put where, but uh, for now. Anyway, Belagar, you can certainly have a Talisman of Endurance, and we'll give some of the runes to your guys. Not the Rune of the Furnace, which has to go into a Slayer army. Most likely, I'd say... Uh, probably actually not to... Hmm, not to Ungram, because Forge Fire is an ability that we already have on his Thanes, and he has two of them, so it kind of makes sense. You already have the Banner of Eternal Flame. I don't think you need a Lichbone Pendant. Rune of Courage is always nice, though. Against the Rats, not the most useful thing in the world. Uh... Stotchel and King Lun have the Razor Standards as well as Ungram. I kind of like that, that's fine. King Lun holds the Master Rune of Groth One-Eye as well, eh? Hmm. And specific for fighting... Well, there's both specifically for fighting Greenskins. Leadership and Discouraged. Eh, hold off on that. Give you the Rune of Battle. And... Let's just give him the Talisman of Endurance as well. Where's Talisman of Endurance? Talisman of Preservation, whatever. Alright, and the rest of the stuff is good as it is, or at the very least we don't need to give them to you. We do want to get that uh, Magnificent Armor Borg Beetle Brow to somebody, though. And we may want to give another Trickster Shard to one of these guys, but I'll think about it, as it doesn't necessarily have to be now. And, oh, I did not level you, sir. Inherited Arms first, Unfaltering second, although the additional HP on these ethereal units is also quite nice. But then again, so is the armor, considering you don't normally have armor, so yeah. Uh, let's move you here to Tobaro. We don't know what's there, and this may be an awful, awful mistake, but... <laughs> I guess we're oh, you can't reach it! Oh, this may be even even worse mistake. Ah. <laughs> I thought he'd be able to attack it immediately upon landing. Well, this ain't good, folks. This ain't good at all. Uh, because what'll happen now is he's beside the army at Tobaro, and we'll get hit by Ikid Claw and Arkling's army at once. Okay. Can we do anything about this? We could try to send this guy your way, but then... No, you know what? That's not gonna work because... Yeah, okay. Belagar. Do or die, my friend. <laughs> Quite literally. Quite literally. Zamnil, you're going to return to Miragliano and you're going to recruit some stuff via lo a global recruitment, as you've no choice but to do so. All right. And I'm very curious as to what will happen. We don't have time to fight a big, big battle like this uh, this episode anymore because we're basically out of time, but I am curious to see whether they'll attack. I don't think they'll be too afraid to. And I am curious whether it'll force us into an ambush battle or not as well, which would be very, very dangerous. What's the speed on these guys? 38. What's the speed on our rangers? 46. They would be able to outrun the storm vermin at the very least, but we can't say the same for our artillery pieces. And we can't do... we can't most likely hold the main line against these guys. I would, however, rather it be Ikit that would ambush us than this army because of the warp fire throwers and stuff, which would be nasty. Hmm. Still, so, lots of fun, lots of potential for fun there. Anyway, let's see if there's anything else we need to do. I don't think that there is. So we need to spend the money, or recruit, and then the turn, and find out. All right. Man, I can't believe the landing and attack didn't work. It looked like it would. Oftentimes you can do this and it does. I guess should have tried landing on this side rather than on this side. Sometimes it depends on which side you try to land as to where. But oh well. Now, buildings real quick. Winter Pyre, we're going to pass through there shortly. Anyway, Kirk Rag 720? That's pretty cheap. We can do that. Uh, Kazad Irkulaz, 1560. Nothing crazy. This does give us an additional engineer capacity, more research rate. And we do potentially want to build some gyro bombers nearby. Yeah, sure, go for it. Why not? Uh, what's up next? Stormbrack Mount Pillar of Skulls. This place will need the constructors to return before we get anything, because it's all crazy expensive here, especially at the Guild Marketplace. It'll just take too long to pay for itself. Uh, you can, however, build a Tinker's Den. 
All right, Trollheim Mountains. Nothing here because we're moving there anyway. Jarnagrund. I believe we were going to build a Tinker's Den here as well. Got to get those Tinker's Dens up everywhere. Uh, Peak Pass, you're fine as you are. At the very least, you're too expensive. Ice Spear and Saber Mountain. Constructors are on the way, so just be patient. Grand Peak is fine. Vela Titans, Firemouth expensive quite expensive we'll build a tier one stuff but uh probably hold off on the other tier stuff hmm what are we gonna build here tinker's den most likely go for a tinker's den all right mountains of morn uh yeah keep building the tool makers workshops unlike the oath gold buildings they are buildable immediately let's also upgrade amble peak and I mean, start off, I guess, with the barley field. Unlike the other territory, Karakazorn is upgradable. Meaning it'll go to high tier. Dwarf Ducks, 3k. It's a little bit steep game, a little bit steep for now. Shard Bastion and Shagrath, yes to the Trinket Maker. Anywhere up north is definitely going to need these reductions. And Fortress of the Damned, we can wait a turn to reduce it further, so we will wait a turn. Shagrath, let's upgrade you first, because you have the port. And we will build the, I guess, Barley Field here. I'm, hmm, Public Order is actually kind of horrendous here. Start with the Refectory. More likely than not, we'll also need defenses along the entire coastline, because who knows who's going to sail on over here. But uh, for now, I think we'll hold off. Palace of Ruin. That's my favorite palace. A trinket maker for you and barley field as well. We can eh, just upgrade the drinking hall. I don't want to deal with negative public order here, but we can wait on the bazaar. Titan's Notch, Dwarf Keep. Well, we're not going to send any constructors over here, so we may as well build it now. And this also means that we can delete uh, both of the uh, growth buildings, at least there. Hmm. I also don't remember whether I deleted the growth buildings in a few other places that we've got, so we'll have to keep an eye on those. All right, more money-making buildings. We still have 25k to us. Do we need to start upgrading Mordheim and Essen? I'm going to hope that we can deal with that, but let's upgrade Essen because it at least is very cheap. We're still going to attempt to trade both of these for these, but... Eh, whatever. We can always cancel this if uh, they're willing to take us in, in its current form. Aragliano, we're gonna upgrade... Oh, wow. 4.1k, eh? I think... Ah, but it needs to be upgraded in order to get the gate at a higher level. Hmm. I'm gonna hold off on that. 4k is a little bit steep for me right now. Uh, Volary, you will be traded. I wonder if we can sack a few more things. Yeah, 10k for sack. Oh, yeah, this actually was a Good move. Lots of uh, lots of sackable territories here to fund our crazy expensive stuff. Griffinwood, you're being traded. Silver Tower of Sorcerers. We do want that gem mine, but until we needed a tier three, so until you're upgradable, it doesn't really matter. So we can hold off on wasting the money or using up the money there. Next up, Zamnel. Build some basic dwarf warriors, then. Out of artillery. Uh, let me just see here what the expenses are like. On the units. Well, the Dwarf Warriors are cheap, but they're cheap everywhere, regardless. Mm, could use a few more. Long beards. They're also quite expensive, though. I didn't want to get that uh, legendary Grudge Lord up and running. Hmm. Right now, I'm just looking into what would be cheap, but uh, reasonably effective. I guess a couple more cannons will do. I don't want to waste too much money on this. That is hard-earned. Only the gyro bombers could be built in one turn like the uh, copters can. I could build a couple of cheap regular copters to chase things down and annoy them. No, they're not going to be effective against the Skaven or the Undead, because the Skaven can stop them in their tracks with Howling Warp Gale and the... Uh, uh, the vampire kills can simply gun them down. So yeah, that's not that's not a good use of our uh, of our time and effort. Uh, keep up with the dwarf warriors for now, but I think we'll get a couple more quarrelers. This isn't necessarily going to be a quarreler army, but they will do for now. Anything else? I get another dwarf warrior. Most them to say two more dwarf warriors. And just units that are cheap and immediately sacrificable. And you know what? Build a non-great weapon, shielded corollers. Frankly, I prefer the shielded ones. 
just because they're less fragile. Even if the great weapons have uh, are dangerous in melee, nonetheless. Anyway, that looks good to me, or at least it looks good enough for now. It's just a temporary army, but, uh, well, it could potentially evolve into one, so we'll see. Now it's on the turn. I'm very curious as to what'll happen with Belagar. Probably could spend a little bit more money, but I'd like to head towards the end turn instead. Uh, wait, quick deal. Just have to check. Ooh. Western provinces are nearly ready for a full-on military alliance. If we were to join the war against the Blessed Dread, they'd do it right now, eh? Hmm. How much money would you give us for the... Uh, wait, join the war against the Blessed Dread? 2.6. Hmm, not as much as I thought. Eh. I'll hold off on it. Maybe for a few turns. Yeah, I know that'll give us more allegiance and it'll help with our eventual all-Air Force army, but yeah, for now, Belagar. It was your moment, it was your day, it was your show today. Um, but how will it end? Uh, Meow Ying. Clan Ashen. No, not yet. Later. We're busy. We busy. Alright, where's Clan Squire? Alright, they will indeed attack. They will not be able to get the ambush going, but they will attack us with two and a little bit of a stack. We have no choice but to win this. If we don't, the... Uh, well, the army is destroyed. It has nowhere to run. And on top of that, if we take too much damage, we're going to be in trouble as well, because next turn we have no choice but to occupy the territory, and we have nowhere to go. So, yeah, it's gonna to be dangerous. Anyway, folks, with that, I'm going to call the episode here. We'll start off with Belagar's do or die moment uh, next episode. Luckily, those rangers are nearly at full HP. He should be a little bit stronger with his rune of uh, Master Rune of Spite and his uh, Talisman of Preservation, and a little bit of extra power for a couple of the uh, frontline rangers. But this is a lot of rats. We got to make sure that we target the right ones and not waste our time. We also got six uses of bloody menas below to contend with which will be annoying for our artillery and our rangers alike interesting times anyway stay tuned for that don't forget to leave those likes and comments below all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching